In a previous lesson, we introduced tournament graphs, and I'll leave a link in the description to that lesson if you need a refresher. A tournament graph is just an orientation of a complete graph, or in other words, it's a directed graph with exactly one arc between each pair of vertices. Today, we'll go over a special type of tournament called a transitive tournament. You might have some idea what this could be if you're familiar with the word transitive. For example, if x is less than y and y is less than z, then x is less than z by the transitive property of the less than relation. With that in mind, it won't be too surprising what a transitive tournament is. We say a tournament is transitive if whenever uv and vw are arcs of the tournament, then uw is an arc as well. So if u is adjacent to v and v is adjacent to w, then u has to be adjacent to w in a transitive tournament. To get a better feel for what this definition of a transitive tournament means, let's orient this complete graph by assigning directions to each edge in such a way that we end up with a transitive tournament. Remember, assigning a direction to each edge in any way gives us a tournament, but let's try to do it in such a way that we get a transitive tournament. We may begin with this edge between B and C, and perhaps we orient it towards C. Then maybe we orient this edge from C to D. Now, how about this edge between D and B? Well now, since B is adjacent to C and C is adjacent to D, B needs to be adjacent to D, since we're trying to make this a transitive tournament. So going back to our definition, what we just saw was B, C being an arc of the tournament, and C, D being an arc of the tournament, and so B, D needs to be an arc of the tournament. All right, let's carry on with the last few edges. We can go ahead and orient this edge from D to A. Then, since C is adjacent to D, and D is adjacent to A, C needs to be adjacent to A. Similarly, B needs to be adjacent to A. And now we have a transitive tournament. You might ask, could we have done this a different way? Could we have come up with a different transitive tournament on these vertices that's not isomorphic to this one? Interestingly, the answer is no. In the last lesson, we talked a little bit about how it's difficult to count the number of non-isomorphic tournaments on any number of vertices, but for transitive tournaments, there's exactly one transitive tournament of each order up to isomorphism. Remember, the order is the number of vertices. So for a four vertex transitive tournament, this is the only one. All of the others are isomorphic to this one. Similarly, for a seven vertex transitive tournament, there is only one. And again, that's up to isomorphism. So of course, the transitive tournaments could be labeled differently so they wouldn't technically be equal, but they have the same structure. They're isomorphic. So that's pretty neat, but the neat properties of transitive tournaments don't stop there. If you inspect this transitive tournament some more, another thing you might notice is that it has no cycles. We might try to go around a cycle here from C to D, then from D to A, uh, but we can't go from A to C to complete the cycle because this arc is going from C to A. We could try making a four cycle, going from B to C, then to D, then to A, uh, but we can't go back to B because this arc is going to A. So there are no cycles in this transitive tournament, and in fact, that is a defining property of transitive tournaments. A tournament is transitive if and only if it has no cycles. That's going to be the first thing we prove about tournaments, which we'll probably do next time. I encourage you to give it a try yourself, though. It's a pretty straightforward proof. Just to give you an idea of why cycles are a problem in transitive tournaments, what would happen if we made this a three cycle by reversing the direction of this arc? So if we make this arc go from A to C, now we have a cycle. But remember, we still want this to be transitive. So since C is adjacent to D and D is adjacent to A, we still need C to be adjacent to A. 
But then we've got two arcs between the same pair of vertices, which isn't allowed in a tournament. When we think of a tournament as literally modeling a tournament, this would mean that in a match between Team C and Team A, both teams won. That just doesn't work in a tournament. So when we introduce a cycle into a transitive tournament, we're forced to add arcs that make it no longer a tournament. So give it a shot proving this theorem, and like I said, we'll go over it next time. We're still not done though. There is another interesting property I want you to notice about transitive tournaments. Remember in a directed graph, the out degree of a vertex is the number of arcs going out of the vertex. Let's write the out degree of each vertex here in yellow. We see there are three arcs going out of the vertex B. Equivalently, B is adjacent to three vertices, so the out degree of B is three. Similarly, there are two arcs going out of C. C has an out degree of two, D has an out degree of one, and A has an out degree of zero. What do you notice? Every vertex in a transitive tournament has a different out degree. Now, of course, in a graph with n vertices, the possible out degrees are 0, 1, 2, and so on, all the way up to n minus 1. Those are the possible out degrees, and in a transitive tournament, since every vertex has a different out degree, all of the possible out degrees will be accounted for. In this case, of course, n minus one is four minus one, which is three, so the possible out degrees were zero, one, two, and three, and those are all of our out degrees. And we could say the same thing about in degrees if we wanted to focus on those. The in degree of B is zero, the in degree of C is one, the in degree of D is two, and the in degree of A is three. Since it has four vertices and there's exactly one arc between each pair of vertices, the in degree and out degree of each vertex will add to three. So they are intimately related. So that's another exercise. You can try to prove that in a transitive tournament, every vertex has a different out degree or a different in degree if you prefer. And we'll go over that in a future video as well. The last thing I wanna mention is since graphs model relations between objects, if we used a graph to model a transitive relation between objects, you would think that we would get a transitive tournament, perhaps. And there are a few more details you have to account for besides just having a transitive relation, but here's an example where we'll turn a transitive relation into a transitive tournament. So consider the less than relation on this set of numbers, two, four, eight, 16, and 32. We can represent each number with a vertex. So we'll say that's two, that's four, that's eight, that's 16, and that is 32. Notice I've already given us a complete graph here with five vertices because a tournament is just an orientation of a complete graph. So we can always begin with a complete graph. And then we can say that x, y will be an arc of our directed graph if x is less than y. Since the less than relation is transitive, we should get a transitive tournament to pop out. So let's see, two is less than all of these numbers, so every arc leaving two will be going away from two. 32 is greater than all the numbers, so all of these arcs will be going towards 32. Then four is less than eight, so this arc will go from four to eight. This arc will go from eight to 16, and this arc will go from four to 16. Now, what we have here is certainly a tournament. It's an orientation of a complete graph, and if you inspect it closely, you'll see that it is a transitive tournament. Obviously, it has to be, because it's representing this transitive relation. If you look closely, you'll notice there are no cycles. For example, if we go from here to here, uh, we can't finish the cycle by going back to two, because this arc is going from two to eight, not the other way around. And if we write the out degrees of the vertices in yellow, two has an out degree of four, four has an out degree of three, eight has an out degree of two, 16 has an out degree of one, 
and 32 has an out degree of zero. Just like we would expect, every vertex has a different out degree. Now this was just supposed to be a fun example, so I'm not going to go into full detail here, but there are a couple important traits about this relation that I haven't mentioned that led to us getting a transitive tournament. Not every transitive relation will actually give you a transitive tournament. Let me know in the comments if you have some ideas about what else we need to guarantee a transitive tournament when we're modeling a relation. For an example of the complication, if this was less than or equal to, instead of just less than, that's still a transitive relation, but it's also reflexive, which means we would have loops from each vertex to itself, which is not allowed in a tournament. But even if we did have a transitive relation that wasn't reflexive, there are still other problems we could run into. So let me know in the comments if you have an idea what those might be. But that's it for now. That is a little bit about transitive tournaments. A tournament is transitive if whenever UV and VW are arcs of the tournament, then UW is an arc as well. I have to perform to be who she